See all the snorting and carrying on? He's just looking at this thing on me and saying, oh, you're not the same guy now. Something different here. So I'll just sneak in here and try to get him to believe that I am the same guy. Ah, he says, I think you've got a surprise for me. If you rush it too much, or if you can't read the horse's reactions, uh, you could get a very violent reaction on the part of the horse. Each time he does that, he goes through a learning process. But now I can go back to the spot where I was when he spooked. And it's a very good idea, instead of putting your hand down there and having your head bent over and everything, to use this hook to get that girth with, particularly on these Mustangs, because they can kick a fly off the wall at 15 feet. All right, that's okay. And he'll start to get accustomed to that girth hanging down there, and he'll learn that it's not a snake or some terrible instrument of torture. Prey animals, like the horse, that defend themselves by running away, uh, they do not like to be enclosed. They like open space. They feel safest in an open area. So the girth in the saddle, uh, as that girth is tightened, is very frightening to the horse. We don't take any unnecessary chances. There was a little flat reaction. Oh, good boy. Frightened him. Oh, Look at guy. that horse's legs, how he's uh, poised to just jump. He's uh, ready to spring into flight. Why isn't he doing it? Because he's already bonded and dependent upon uh, this man as his leader. to me again, wearing this. Movement creates submissiveness, and so by moving the horse, he's hoping, he's hoping to uh, get a change of attitude. Oh, I'm losing ground, Caleb. The alarm caused by the compression of the surf single and girth is now inhibiting his responses to being led. But in just a few moments, he's going to start relaxing as he desensitizes to that pressure. And uh, he'll be responding as he was. There he goes now. He'll respond just like he did earlier. That's nice. Why? Because they so quickly desensitize. Mission accomplished. And we put the surf single aside. He's got an exercise saddle. Now he's got different sight to see here. This horse is now desensitized to Monty, his hat, his clothing, and the surf single. But he sees this saddle. It's a frightening thing to him. He knows it's different. He knows he hasn't seen it before. It's a whole new thing. And he's pretty sure that this is a predator I've got here. He's pretty sure that there's a lot of trouble connected with it somewhere. Oh, that's silly now. You're repeating yourself. Oh, good boy. Oh, good boy. Oh, good boy. That's a nice boy. Monty's going to use the hook now to reach the girth and bring it under his belly. But you don't have to be really tight. Then come... There, there it is. Alarm reaction. He's intentionally moving him around so he'll become desensitized to the feel of that saddle. I won't look him in the eye and I'll just step up, put my hand out, and he'll bring his face right. A little right. reinforcement. So we'll take these irons right down and let them be down there on his side like that. They see something on their side and they'll try to kick it. Found something new, didn't you? Huh? Oh boy, that's a pretty spooky thing there. Yeah. He's feeling this for the first time in his life, where when something touched him, it wasn't actually touching him. That's a strange feeling. There. <laughs> saddles or saddles, but this kind of a saddle 
is pretty wild. Stock saddle. See, if he'd put this big stock saddle on initially without desensitizing him with the sur single and the little saddle, he would have had a fit. Good jump, Caleb, so you want to be sure you're out of the way. When one starts crouching back that way, he could jump and strike out with his front feet and sure enough hurt you. So you get yourself in a position... I don't know if the casual observer or the inexperienced person can appreciate it, but all it would take is a wrong move on Monty's part and this horse would explode. It's only his skill and experience that's keeping that from happening and the fact that he's so attuned to the horse's reactions. Fly, I'm in love with you. This little horse is now ignoring the saddle. He's uh, kind of oblivious to it. He's concentrating on Monty and has kind of forgotten that he's got that saddle on his back. Now it was time for the final challenge, getting a rider into the saddle. In case of trouble, he had to be light and very agile. Wrangler Scott Silvera was well aware of the risks involved. You go ahead. You go ahead. Make your move. Get your halter, do whatever you want. Ooh, now. Ooh, now. Ooh, now. Ooh, now. Easy now. He's used to the people, he's used to the saddle, but he's not used to the weight of a rider on his back. Do it, son. Do it, son. Be a nice boy. Be a nice boy. Easy now. Easy now. Then you make your move. You go for it. Monty had done it. In less than three days, he'd achieved what many thought was impossible. That's a tense time, isn't it? It's wonderful. Are you kidding me? It's wonderful. You, you know you can do it, but it isn't until it happens, you know? You're just walking right on around, right and left. That's good. That's good. It's just the most wonderful feeling you could ever have. I'm really happy. Isn't it remarkable that this was a frightened wild animal? Look at it now. Wonderful. Look how much has been accomplished. And it's been done without injuring the animal, uh, without uh, brutality. It's been done by gentle psychological means. Monty's dream had come true. He'd proved that by talking to it in its own language, even the wildest of horses will learn to respond. It's been said by good horsemen that if learning is one to 10, the most important part of learning is zero to one. It's the same with children, I believe. If children can hear positive things about tiny little improvements, they respond very favorably. At his farm in California, Monty's theories about horses have been applied to raising children. He and his wife, Pat, have three children of their own and dozens of foster children. We had 47 foster children. Almost all of them came to us at 11, 12, and 13 years of age, which is long after life's patterns have already been deeply set in. Steve Arlano is now a successful businessman living in California, but as a young teenager in San Francisco, he was becoming rather wild. Steve Arlano came to me at uh, about 15 years of age. He was on a course to have uh, some real problems in his life. And I'd like to think that the time that he spent with me put him on a positive course. Um, I guess he would be the final judge as to whether that was the case or not. We did some pretty uh, silly things. I was in fights on a regular basis. And we lived near the uh, University of San Francisco, and we broke into buildings to play pinball. One particular time, the San Francisco police came in and were chasing us, and my father stepped out of 
the apartment and heard the officer say, stop or I'll shoot. Monty believes that the way he dealt with these problems was similar to the techniques he uses with his horses. I wasn't until a few years ago he, he, he had told me that, well, I use that technique on you. At the time, I didn't know what te technique he was talking about. The psychology isn't any different in its basic principles. You don't put a child in a round pen and send him away by flicking a line at him. But in human terms, you do the same thing putting them to work when they're negative and giving them great positive consequences when they're positive. Any little thing, find that thing that he can do positive and reward him for it. It may seem very unimportant to you, but it may be the most important thing that, that in that child's life because it may be the first step in the right direction. If he pushed me away, I certainly didn't think anything poorly of it. And when he pulled me back in, I just enjoyed that. I think he brought us in because he wanted to help kids, and he didn't do it yelling, screaming, or any way. Just let me know what was what taught me wrong from right. Bill Cherry came to me a very aggressive sort of a kid. First thing he did was come up to me and say, Hey, Turkey, what do you want? I said, What I want is that from this day forward, you will call me Mr. Roberts. And uh, you will not be disrespectful at all. That's what I want. Well, you're not going to get that. You know. Yeah, I probably am going to get that. But, Billy, I'm going to work to get you to want to give me that rather than to tell you you have to give me that. So you call me whatever you want. I was cocky. <laughs> uh, I was very outgoing. And I went to work on him on this very principle that we've been discussing. He got negative consequences for negative actions. And he spent some time digging ditches and scrubbing toilets to the point where he'd stand up in your face and say he's not going to do it, you know. And then you'd list the further negatives that that would get him. Bill Cherry was training to be a jockey. And one of his jobs was to exercise horses every day. Sometimes it didn't feel like riding all the horses. <laughs> and I remember one day, uh, I think I had about 10 mounts. And uh, when we ride the horses, we used to mark it off on a sheet. Well, I think I only rode about eight, but still marked off 10. And um, went home, took a shower, and Monty approached me and says, how was the ride today? I said, good. He goes, did you ride all your horses? I said, yeah. He goes, why are you lying to me? I got caught. He says, I want you here after school. I want you to ride the horses. Um, so that taught me never to do that again, to cheat. <laughs> <laughs> 